Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vibs from Slider here. Today, we are going to talk about numbers in JavaScript. Now, when you talk about numbers, there's a lot of stuff that comes into the picture. We are going to look at certain important points in this video when dealing with numbers. Now, the first point out there is going to be the basic stuff about numbers. Then, we are going to talk about how to put octal values inside numbers, how to put hex values inside numbers, then floating point values, or numbers with decimal points. We are going to talk about the E notation. We are going to talk about floating point comparison issues. And then we are going to talk about infinity, which is a special value when dealing with numbers. And there is this function called is finite. And ultimately, we are going to talk about not a number or nan and its properties. And we are going to talk about the is nan method or function and its conversion and other rules associated with Phew, that looks a lot of stuff, but don't worry about it. You're gonna take each thing easily and slowly, one step at a time. So let's get started. So before we begin, we would like to show you what we have already. At slidener.com on our blog, we already have a very detailed article that talks about all these points that we have mentioned and includes everything, the decimal points, then about the conversions, the different types of output that you can get while playing with numbers, the is finite function, NAND, the rules of conversion for NAND, numeric conversions and a lot of stuff in a lot more detail and how methods work and stuff like that so be sure to check this post out it is right below in the description text of this video so here i'm using jetbrains webstorm for writing my code you can use anything you want notepad sublime text it's completely up to you so you use this where keyword to make numbers now at this point you need to specify the name of your variable let's call it num1 here and then give it a value say 1244 over here now all you gotta do is display this value inside your browser you can do that by saying alert and then put number one inside so that it gets displayed on the browser at this point go here you select chrome here to run this on chrome and there you go one two four four is displayed right in front of you click ok and we are back to square one so this is the basic way you can make numbers and play with them now let's take a look at how we can put octal values. Now if you guys remember, octal are numbers which have 0 to 7. In other words, 8 and 9 are invalid characters in octal. Now for those of you who are not familiar, after 7 comes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, and then there is again 20, 21 and stuff like that. So that's how octal numbers work. You put 0 here, you put 1, 2 here. So this is an octal number. At this point you save here. And you gotta again refresh your browser at this point, and you can see it says 10 over here. And the reason it does that is because 07 is considered as 7. Then comes 10, which is 8, 11, which is 9, 12, which is 10 in case of octal. Same way you can make hexadecimal numbers. If you know hexadecimal, they have 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, and F. So to do hexadecimal numbers, you can just say O X over here, and let's say you say F over here. So F stands for 15 in hexadecimal. Again, you save this here, just click OK at this point, refresh over here, and as you can see, it displays R15 value over here. So this is how you can make octal and hexadecimal numbers. Now notice carefully that whenever you have octal or hexadecimal, your browser simply converts these values to decimal values and displays them on the screen, right? So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about how we can make a number with decimal points. For example, pi is 3.14, right? So you can see 3.14 here. So you can just go here, save this, click OK over here, finish the dialog, refresh the browser again. And as you can see, 3.14 gets printed. Now this is what is called a floating point value. It takes double the space as an integer value. Therefore, the browser is always going to try to compress this into an integer for example if you just say three point over here and if you don't put any number after that what your browser is gonna do let's save this find out what the browser does refresh it here as you can see it shows three here on the screen because three point is being converted to three into an integer to reduce space same way if you have 3.0 here even that is gonna get converted into an integer because it is an integer right and as you can see, it says 3 over here, which means whole numbers like 3.0, 4.0, they get converted automatically into integers. So this is how your JavaScript works with floating point numbers 
trying to save space out there. Now you can also use something called the E notation. Now at this point, we have actually taken a look at the first four points. You let me remove them for clarity here. Now let's try to use something called the E notation. Let's take a look at that. Now when you have very large numbers or very small numbers, you use the E notation. For example, if you want to write 500,000, you could write something like this, right? You have to count the number of zeros and make sure that it's 500,000. But you can also write 500,000 like 5E5, which means 5 into 10 raised to 5 or 10 multiplied 5 times and that multiplied by 5. At this point, save this. Click OK here and refresh the browser to see the new value. As you can see, 500,000 is displayed perfectly. And you could, the decimals here, for example, you can say 5.2 E5 to print 520,000 on the browser over here. So that's how you can show large values. Also, you can show very small values. For example, you could say something like 0 0.0005. Now, this would be hard when there are more zeros. Now, let's see how we can write this in another way. We can say 5. E minus 4 using the E notation here. Again, if you click save this, refresh the browser here, as you can see, 0 0.0005. That's perfectly coming here. Let's say I have two numbers. So I have two numbers where num 1 is 0 0.1 and there's 0 0.3. And I simply add them up and I display the result on the screen. What do you think is going to be the result? You refresh here, you see it's 0 0.4. That looks good, right? But let me show you something over here. If you put 0. Point, actually, let me change the values to 0. 0.07 and 0. 0.23 because I want to show you something here. At this point, we expect the answer to be 0. 0.3 when you add both of them, right? But let's take a look. If you refresh the browser here, if you'll notice, it says 0. 0.3 and there's a whole list of zeros out there. And then there is a 4, which means floating point addition is not accurate. And that means if you try to depend on the floating point addition and do something, that's going to fail. For example, if you have an if condition that says if sum equals equals 0 0.3 and then you want to say hi, the sum was perfectly correct, you're going to run, run wrong over here. This is not going to work always depending on the values present on number one and number two. And if you're wondering why is this happening, these errors are because of the IEEE 7.5.4 floating point specification all the other languages that support the same floating point mechanic also have the same problems even in java you have the same issues or c sharp so let's get back to javascript and figure out how we can work with infinity and is finite at this point you have the question which says what is the largest number supported by javascript and what is the smallest number supported by javascript again the answer is very simple. The largest number that JavaScript allows is number dot max value. Now this number has its property max value which contains the largest number that can be worked with in JavaScript. And the smallest number is again you can say number dot min value and this can be stored in your number one if you want. So the next question arises what happens when the value of your calculation exceeds the maximum value. For example, if you say where num1 is 2 times number dot max value, what is going to happen in that case? Let's go here, refresh the browser. As you can see, it says infinity. So there is a special value in JavaScript called infinity that takes care of handling the cases where the result of a calculation is greater than the largest value that can be handled. Same way if you say minus 2 into number dot max value and if you refresh here there is minus infinity as well so if you're performing some complex calculation and how do you know whether your value is infinite or finite now that can be achieved with the help of this method called or a function called is finite over here this function has two parentheses all you gotta do inside this parentheses is pass a variable that you want to check whether it's finite or infinite for example you can say num1 over here and you can store that result inside say where result and you can print the result out here just to see what happens go here click save refresh it says false is finite it returns false which means that the value is not finite in other words the value is infinite so here if you change the value to something like minus 2899 and then again you save this refresh the browser 
this time it says true over here which means the value 2899 is finite so you can use is finite to check perfectly what is finite and what is infinite now let's take a look at the next point nan and its properties nan simply means not a number here i have my var number and i have set a divided by 5 that is gibberish right that is garbage it doesn't even make any sense now if at this point if you run this here in the browser it says nan the value of num1 is not a number a divided by 5 cannot be understood by your javascript and therefore it makes it as not a number now this is a very important property and you can determine a lot of things with that for example you can say where num2 for example here you can say num2 is num1 by thousand so what do you think is going to be the answer when not a number is divided by thousand let's find out just save here just go and refresh your browser and as you can see it's again nan so nan plus one is nan nan by thousand is nan whatever you do with nan it's gonna give you nan as the final answer let's also test one more thing let's say nan equals equals nan is that fine false in this case remember this as very well this as well when you have two nans on comparison side and you're gonna check if they are equal or not they are never equal with each other just like you had the ability to check if a number was finite or not you have the ability to check if a number is nan or not with this function called is nan again all you have to do is pass the variable inside this function is nan inside the parentheses so that it can check if the value inside that variable is not a number or is it a number so in this case i have where num1 is 56 and there's a result i'm saying is nan of num1 which is 56 so is 56 not a number of course 56 is a number right what do you think the result is going to be let's find out just refresh here it says false because 56 is a number if i go here and make this as 56 what do you think is going to happen now this case 56 is a string because i have put double quotes over here but still this 56 can be converted into a numeric value 56 by your javascript engine or interpreter and therefore if you run this it still says false because this 56 is convertible but if i say something like phi high what do you think about this let's again find out refresh it says true because phi high cannot be converted into a proper number therefore is nan is true for this variable or this value so here if you say hi over here again this cannot be converted to a proper number so at this point you go and refresh the browser it's gonna say true so what are the rules of conversion of a variable or its value into is nan let's take a look at that so again if you go to the blog here and if you take a look when you supply nan to is nan it will return true if you have a number like 30 which i showed you it is false because 30 is a number 65 the string can be converted to a numeric value so ultimately it's gonna give false orange cannot be converted to a number so it's true nan of false now false is a boolean value which we discussed in the previous video false gets converted to zero in javascript and true gets converted to one in javascript whenever you're involving false and true in arithmetic or numeric operations like these so here in this case is nan is gonna again return false because zero is a valid number so these are the different ways we can work with the is nan function and numbers over here now there is still something that we need to discuss and that is numeric conversions which we'll be doing in the next video in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to slide note and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. I'll catch you in the next video.